Hello and welcome to our Tag Management Tips brought to you by Tag Inspector. I uh, wanted to start off this series with an overview of really the mental framework that we try to get a lot of our clients and people that we just speak with um, uh, thinking about and how to think about any sort of a tag management sort of issue or initiative. How we like to think about this and how we encourage you to think about this is in the process of a journey. So there's different steps and different pieces along the way that you really need to account for, but you realistically have to go through these in order in order to be successful at the tail end. So going through just what these different steps are, the first piece here is our goals. So if we don't have a really good idea of what the goal of the initiative is, is it an analytics implementation? Is it, are we trying to um, optimize our website for performance? Or is there a new legal and privacy initiative that we need to make sure that all of our tags are compliant within? We need to know what the goal of the process is and it, then we can start determining, okay, what are the steps in order to take to, to get there? So once we've defined the business goal, we've worked with our business users, uh, we've worked with whoever it is that's really interested in this particular tag sort of issue, and, written out, okay, this is what we're trying to accomplish, we then move into some of these action steps. First step along the way is going to be our tag audit. So for a tag audit, what we need to do is identify what tags are actually on the website, where are they, what pieces of data are being collected, and then what types of interactions are actually being tracked. Now one huge word of caution on the tag audit standpoint, we have people come to us all the time saying, I need to audit my website, I need to know everything that's on there, every single data point collected, I just want to collect it all, and then we'll figure out what to do with it. Never ever go through the process in that way, and that's why we start with the goals. If all we're doing is collecting a bunch of information, it's not actionable. We have nowhere to go with it, it's just a huge, huge lake um, of data, and it's going to one take a lot of time to do and two on the tail end just figuring out what to do with all that information um, is going to be a huge burden as well so when we go into the audit we're wanting to look for things specifically you know is my checkout flow uh, is tagging all good there what tags are on the site so i need to create an inventory uh, if i'm looking at something like performance what tags are potentially performing poorly and why so we can then know what we need to fix and, and what we need to define moving forward. Once we know what's happening on the site, so with our audit, and we know what we're wanting to accomplish, we can then get into the stage here of our tag policy. Now the tag policy is a little bit more high level. We're just identifying what tags should be, what platforms should be, are allowed to be on our website, and then what tags are required to be. A couple stages in, within that process. First, obviously, high level, what's allowed to be there? You know, coming out of the audit, we're going to have a really good idea of the different platforms that are on our website. Should they all be there? Is something left over from someone that used to work in account or in marketing and they were piloting some type of uh, media platform last year? And that's still on the website. Things like that we can remove. Uh, later, but right now we can define, okay, this shouldn't be there. We then, once we have that list of what things are allowed, we then get into requirements. Your analytics platform, your uh, media tracking types of platforms, any sort of um, data management platform that you might be running on your website. But getting into the requirements for those to define where should they be, how should they be loading, and what types of data should they be um, collecting. Once we know high level, what should be there, how it should be loading, uh, that sort of thing, we can get into our actual architecture. Now this is a, a poor effort at drawing a house here on my part, but uh, what we're trying to do here is, is build um, the entire, the foundation as well as uh, the building really that our business is going to stand on when it comes to making data driven decisions around our digital processes. So we need to take the information um, in our requirements here. So we've defined what platforms are gonna be there. We need to now start breaking down what data is required, on what pages, what interactions are we gonna be tracking. And here in the architecture area, 
we define and figure out how that looks on our website. Um, are we implementing a data layer? Is it something that's new? Is it something that we're building on top of for a new platform that we're bringing on? But we need to know what that looks like and we document all that out here. And now we know exactly what we're doing, the, what st steps we're needing to take in order to accomplish our goal that we defined back in step one. This then gets us into what we call our action loop. So steps five, six, and seven are the actual implementation of the architecture uh, and everything that we're, we've defined here. It might be removal of some tags, might be addition of some tags, might be building out of that data layer. We're then gonna test and validate, make sure everything is working properly. If not, we fix it. Um, and then for ongoing monitoring, because the one constant in business is that nothing is ever constant, we need to be ongoing monitoring this architecture making sure our required platforms are collecting required information at all times. So we have an alerting mechanism that can alert us whenever anything breaks and then go back through this loop. Now this process, one is obviously great uh, up front, just building out that entire tag management process, but also for any new tag implementation um, or any new functionality that you're putting into the website. Following these steps will always keep you in the clear. In our next iterations of our tag management tips, we'll walk through each of these different steps in a little bit more in depth. Um, so look forward to going through that with you at that point.